Hey guys, welcome back to another update video for The Bazaar. Today, I want to introduce you to Eric, our design director. Hi everybody, I'm Eric and I'm the game design director on The Bazaar and we're going to talk about a couple of different topics today. We're going to talk about game balance and game pacing and how they work in The Bazaar, what we mean by them and why they're important. So first, let's talk about game balance and what we can mean by that. So game balance is really important for a couple of different reasons. Obviously, in a game that has any sort of competition in it, it's really important that the game feels fair, that all of the characters feel like they have an equal chance uh, against one another to complete every challenge that they come across in the game and that they all do it in kind of their own special way. Now, the other reason that game balance is important and why we pair it with talking about game pacing is that balance also really affects pacing. And pacing is just the, the kind of cadence that the game takes place on. So combat, but also outside of combat. So things like how often do you go to a merchant? How often do you encounter a monster? How often do you have an event? All of that. And what we want, and, and generally speaking, our philosophy for the bazaar is we don't ever want the pacing to fall into too predictable a rhythm. We always want you to feel like there's something exciting going on that you don't know what's around the, the next corner. But you also have to balance that against um, some amount of predictability so that you can plan out what you're going to do and things like that. And then as it pertains to combat, you want the pacing of combat to be pacing that really encourages you to be able to um, use a variety of all of your items that encourages you to try and see different builds and things like that. So first let's talk about pacing in combat and how that works in the bazaar and why it's important. So combat is fairly quick in the bazaar. You know, fights don't last a super long time. But if we were to look at kind of where we were at right now, while the game is not in a balanced state, combat is over, there's a, a death in it. We're tending to see times that look a little bit like this. So if this was like, Insta kill. I think, you know, some spike builds, there are things, you know, where Vanessa throws a bunch of knives at you or Pig rolls a giant boulder at you. And then out here are sort of protracted sandstorm battles. So people who aren't aware, after a certain amount of time in the bazaar, a sandstorm happens and it starts damaging both players progressively more and more. And we want this strategy for players to be able to build builds that where they don't get damaged very much. And so they're relying on the sandstorm to kill their opponent um, while they survive it. And so what we see when the game is unbalanced is you see something like this where you have a lot of insta-kills, especially late in the game after you've had time to do your build and you've had a lot of protracted sandstorm battles because you're generally going toward numbers where you deal as much damage as possible right at the beginning, or you're going for numbers where like, I just want to be hard to kill. I've got lots of shields, I have lots of health, I have lots of regen, I have lots of healing, all of those sorts of things. And this isn't great for a number of reasons. First off, you know, if you've got fights that are kind of in this zone, they're over so quickly you don't even really know what happened. And you feel like your build doesn't get a chance to kind of get going and show what it can do, and it, it tends to feel a little unfair. And kind of by that same note, builds that, that kind of start getting into this territory, they feel a little frustrating in that it's like, you know, my opponent just will never die. And the sandstorm killed me. And not only that, but I had to watch the sandstorm do it for a long time, you know, and I had to see those numbers tick down. And that's, that's not a great experience either. And so we don't want those things to happen. Instead, what we were more looking for is a curve of combat that kind of looks more like a bell. The idea being that what we really want is the vast majority of our combats to take place in kind of this sweet spot. During the sweet spot, we found that when we have combats that take place in here, they tend to be a little bit more exciting. There's a little bit more back and forth. It's not instantly over. It's not like inevitable that you're going to lose and you can kind of see where the numbers are going and you know, you're just waiting for the sandstorm to, to finish you. And so we really want to compress things in here. So how do we do that? through balance. So right now, there are a couple different items in the game that are sort of causing these sorts of things. So we tended to have early on a lot of effects that can instantly trigger an item right at the beginning of combat. 
Um, and because we want the Bazaar system to be really, really flexible and for you to discover cool builds, we want a lot of access to those sorts of things. And so one of the ways that we do that, we don't want to get rid of those things entirely. In particular, when you combine those sort of instant activations with any item that does like a lot of damage. So for example, there's a neutral item that one of our testers currently really, really loves. It's called the Scythe, and it does a percentage of health and damage. And what they tend to do is they have multiple Scythes and then they, you know, the each Scythe is doing a percent health of the, the enemy opponent's health and they spike those things really, really, really quickly at the beginning of the fight. And so we really want that kind of that insta-cast item in the game, and we don't want that to go away. So the way that we can preserve that is we can have those effects spread across fewer items so that you don't have as much access to them. And then the second thing that we can do is use another balancing factor we, that we have, which is the size of cards. So there are three different sizes of cards in the bazaar. There's small, there's medium, and there's large. And what we can do is we can identify any cards that are problems as far as like, you know, hey, this thing activates right at the beginning of the combat, it's just not gonna be fair. And so what we can do is we can make certain that those items tend to be in the large size category or, or in, in the medium size category. And then what we can do is look at items that we think are interesting that have instacast, uh, you know, as instacast options, and we can make those small. And then we can make the items that cause the instacasting to happen or the cast of beginning of fight to happen, and we can make them only affect small items. And that way, we get a lot of the freedom of the combos that we want and the ability for you to build really cool things, but we don't have all of those balance problems. And so that's, that's one of the ways that we can handle that. Now, I, I mentioned the side before, and one of the other ways that we have is duplication of items. So one of the things that we want, we want really, really diverse builds in the bazaar. We don't want you to have one item over and over and over again. At the same time, there are some really, really fun ways that you can utilize the same item in a build uh, multiple times. And so one of the things that we're looking to do right now is to take a bunch of the the ways that the game works and to, to tweak them just a little bit so that we can make sure that those situations with say the scythe don't you don't have a player whose entire board is just scythes because um, not only is that overpowered but it's not the most interesting thing in the world to fight against and it's really not even the most interesting thing to build as a build and so there are a couple different ways to get duplicate items so one of the ways that that the bazaar works is if you own an item and you have it on your board that item doesn't show up in regular merchants so you can't naturally get duplicate items but there are some very very cool events in the game there's one called magic mirror where you encounter kind of this mysterious mirror in the bazaar and it allows you um, to see a mirror image of your current build and to to get an item from your current build one of the problems with that is that Right now, we don't have any limits on how often an event can happen. And so that event can happen over and over and over again, which can lead to, you know, a board full of scythes if you get particularly lucky. So what we're doing is we're putting controls on certain events where we're saying, hey, this event can't occur multiple times. So while you may get Magic Mirror once, and it's going to feel really special and cool when you get Magic Mirror, because it's one of the, the only ways to duplicate an item in your build. And then you're going to have two sides, and then we can know things like, well, the maximum number of sides that anybody can get is going to be two because we know you can only get Magic Mirror once. Or we can take an event and we can kind of alter it. So for example, the Scythe, as I said, is a neutral item that any character can use and you obtain it by uh, defeating kind of a, a powerful boss. If we don't want to restrict that boss to only showing up once in your run, what we, we can do is we can say, well, you've encountered it and you picked the Scythe. We're going to take that into account and we're gonna change the boss the next time you see it. So that now instead of offering you the Scythe, maybe it drops a complimentary item or it just doesn't offer that or it won't fight you again because it knows that you beat it before or something like that. We have a lot of options and a lot of cool things that we can do as far as that goes. So that's a big part of how we want to control kind of the, the builds that we were talking about that take place and sort of resolve themselves during that short time frame in here. For the other builds, one of the things that we have in the bazaar right now is 
You know, everybody loves large numbers going up and, and things like that. But we want those, again, those numbers to be under control. And so we're doing a balance pass right now where we're taking those overall health numbers and we're sort of compressing them. And at the same time, we're bringing up the base numbers. So we're kind of controlling the range that the numbers can fall in. We're having a look at damage numbers, at speed, at the time that things execute at. And we're just making sure that those overall game numbers, again, encourage things to fall into kind of this sweet spot area for combat. So we're doing a balance pass like that right now. The second pacing thing that I wanted to talk about was sort of out of game pacing. Pacing outside of combat in the bazaar. So one of the things that we really want out of the bazaar is we want it to feel like a place that has a lot of opportunities for adventure and a lot of excitement. But at the same time, we want some amount of predictability in the game so that you can figure out how to structure your runs and figure out how to make decisions. Um, you know, if, if just anything can happen at any time, then you're gonna be left a little bit like, well, it's, it feels just a little too RNG, it feels too random. And so there are three different basic encounter types or things that you can encounter in the bazaar. And um, those are monsters, events, and merchants. The way that we get a lot of variety while maintaining some amount of predictability is to vary kind of over time and days how those things interact. If you had a straight amount of variety over time, it would, you know, kind of look like this. And then that would be kind of boring and it wouldn't be, you know, it would be like, hey, there's a there's a merchant and there's a monster and there's an event every single day. And then it would feel very, very predictable. And so we don't want that, um, but we do want a little bit of predictability. So what we do is we think of things like monsters in the game are kind of your basic source of income. You need resources in order to buy things in the bazaar in order to build up your build. And so we want you to have sort of constant access uh, to monsters. And so you're going to have a pretty steady flow of monsters. You know, they're going to change and get stronger as the build gets stronger across the days. But the variety is going to be fairly constant. You're going to have generally consistent access to them, things like that. Merchants on the other hand, feel like they're more of a staple. So you need to go to a merchant, you need to buy things at the beginning. And so what we want is for the variety of merchants to be pretty high and for their guaranteed that you're gonna see them to be very high. And so what'll happen is merchants kind of look like this over time. What we'll do is over the time of days, you'll start seeing different merchants, but you might not see them as much. Um, in here, we want the merchant variety to be very, very high at the beginning of the run because you're going to be like figuring out all the possibilities. You know, do I want to go with an ammo build? Do I want to go with a burn build? Do I want to do that? What do I see at the merchants? Where are my opportunities to do cool things? And over time, we'll decrease kind of the number of merchants that you see, but we will start bringing in merchants that are a little bit more tuned to, to showing up in those later days. Like we have a merchant called Lux who sells mostly really rare kind of powerful items. And so th that merchant might show up a little later, whereas JJ, who's more of our basic merchant, might you know start falling off in how often you see him. And then for events, events are kind of our, our wild card. They're super unpredictable. They're, you know, anything from talking to an intergalactic courier to, you know, battling a gang of thieves or or tricking them, uh, you know, into revealing the location of their their stash or something like that. And so events um, provide a lot of variety and a lot of cool kind of unique rewards and unique opportunities for your build. And so we want events to kind of do the opposite thing where where the variety of events at first, we have early game events, but you don't want too many of them because you're just getting yourself established. You're just starting to you know, build your build and things like that. And we want the, the variety of events to ramp up over time so that toward the end of your run, you're seeing a lot of things. Um, there's a lot more sort of unpredictability happening because the predictability of your build has sort of closed in and you're sort of locking into, okay, I've, I think I've got my items, I'm making myself more powerful, and now I'm encountering all these, these cool things that I can add, you know, a little bit of power and things like that to my build. What we hope this all ends up doing for you is that you end up with pacing 
that provides enough predictability that you can kind of plan out your build and feel like you're being, um, especially early in the game, that you're able to know, okay, well, I can, I know I'm going to have this opportunity to do this and I know I'm going to be able to find a merchant. We don't want you in a position where you're like, I have a bunch of gold, but I can't spend it anywhere because there are no merchants showing up. And we don't want you to be in a position where the opposite position where you like, I have no way to earn gold and there are only merchants showing up and I can't, I can't actually buy anything. And at the same time, we don't want the events to be too wild. So the, the effect that this should have with this sort of pacing is that while you're locking in your build, there's not too many crazy things happening, but over time, as you start locking in the build, as the build starts getting more focused, you start encountering more and more things that are kind of, kind of cool, give you opportunities to exercise that build and just show it off. And then cool encounters that allow you to gain rewards that might allow you a little bit of like a splash into it. We hope that the pacing in the bazaar feels both predictable and adventurous and exciting at the same time. So that's how balance affects pacing during the game, both inside of combat and outside of combat. So we'll see you next time in another update video on the making of the bazaar.